Each year on his birthday, September the 11th, Ostad Ilahi had his photograph taken. The photos here represent the years 1952, 1955, and 1957. Again, a short film summarizes this period of his life, putting an end to the second section. After the passing of my father, while continuing with my ascetic practice, I decided to leave the seclusion in which I had always lived. For several years, I stayed alternately in my native village, in Tehran and in Kermanshah, attending at the same time to the administration of my land, the practice of music, and my spiritual researches. Little by little, I came to feel that a radically new approach to mysticism was needed, and I began to explore new paths that would make it possible for human beings to attain perfection. Even though the basic principles of spirituality are immutable, the modalities of their application vary with time. The time for ecstasy and solitary meditation had come to an end. After some years of research, it became clear to me that the best way for testing my ethical principles and broadening my vision was to be in touch with society. That was why in 1929, I cut my long hair, exchanged my traditional robes with a modern suit of clothes, and took a job at the registry office in Kermanshah. Two years later, I became a civil servant at the registry office of Tavdrish in the north of Tehran. At the same time, I had my name registered at the Superior School of Jurisprudence. No more than six months was left before the end of the three-year course of studies, yet I succeeded in passing the final examination. Thus, I embarked on a judicial career that took me through numerous judicial responsibilities in different parts of the country until the year 1957. Throughout all these years, I went on with my spiritual researches, trying to make use of my experiences in order to further enlarge my vision. I was personally reluctant to enter public service, but God decided otherwise. He somehow forced me to become a judge and gave me sensitive assignments. Later on, I realized that each of those assignments contained innumerable pearls of wisdom that thousands of sages and philosophers together could not bring forth. As a judge, I would do things that no one dared to do. I would have preferred to be dismissed rather than giving an unjust verdict. That was because I was accountable only to God and not to the ministry. And I wasn't afraid of anyone. Twelve years of devotional and ascetic practice had no more value than one year in the midst of society. That is why I recommend you to live in society and at the same time assume a dignified and exemplary behavior. <laughs> 